Ashley Carter is a registered dietitian, nutritionist, and co-founder of Eat Well Exchange, a nonprofit that teaches low socioeconomic communities of color how to eat their cultural foods in a healthier way. Ashley graduated from Florida State University with a degree in dietetics and also minor in religion. She's currently pursuing her master's in clinical nutrition with a focus in health information and technology. With her nonprofit, they provide cooking classes, gardening workshops, and professional training to educate the nutritional value of foods from around the world. To this day, they have educated over 8,000 people. They work with community gardens and have even started a garden in Grand Goave, Haiti to improve access and affordability to healthier foods. The goal is to prevent negative health outcomes while still maintaining our cultural foods. Good day, family and friends. As we mentioned earlier, you are all in for a treat. I have none other than Miss Ashley Carter who's here with us. And as we all know, this week is self-care week. Last week, we provided you the physical education that's needed as far as fitness is concerned. But this week, we're going to talk about, as promised, the 80%. And I know oftentimes, we all know that's the hardest part of this process. That's the hardest part of this lifestyle. Is the 80%. But, you know, I'm, I'm not going to prolong this process because I want you all to reap what I've benefited from this young lady so far who has a wealth of knowledge in this area. She's a dietitian, as we mentioned, and she's well informed when it comes to nutrition. So Miss Ashley, welcome to Qualified TV. Welcome to our Qualified Podcast. We are so elated and happy to have you. So greet the people while you're here before we get started. Well, thank you for having me and hello everybody. As he mentioned, my name is Ashley Carter. So I'm a registered dietitian and I'm excited to be here today because I can tell you as a quick percentage, only 3% of registered dietitians identify as black. Wow. So it's very rare that we have someone to talk to us about our health, our nutrition and foods that we relate to. So I'm excited to talk to you all today. Awesome. And you beat me to the punch because <laughs> there aren't enough of us. And, and again, my show is for the diverse population, but we have to be honest. A great majority of us, especially in the black community, are unhealthy. America is, of all countries, America's number nine out of 10 when it comes to health. And recent studies have even in, in, indicated that the number one cause of death is heart attack, especially in the urban communities. So with that being said, can you provide us, because we, we, we want to really dive in on that, you know, with our foods and what we've been cultivated to eat, because I believe, I don't want to say generational curse, but that's in our generation. Certain foods we were brought up to eat. As we were raised eating these certain foods, our taste buds have adapted to these ways of eating. So when you now shift over out of nowhere from eating certain foods, like Thanksgiving is coming up and I know everybody is excited. The list goes on. When you have spent years after years eating a certain way, following a certain system, big mama cooks, auntie cooks, mama cooks, whoever cooks, we're used to, and our taste buds are used to a certain type or caliber of food. So when someone is switching over saying, you know what, I'm tired of being in bad health. I don't wanna die as a result of a heart attack. I don't want to suffer with high blood pressure. I want to break that curse, okay? What would you say is, like one of the most effective diets in the market that you can recommend uh, to all of our viewers? Well, first, I just want to say, start off by saying that when it comes to changing our foods the way we eat, it's really deep. Because when you think about food, it's not just because I like mac and cheese. It's because mac and cheese reminds me of cooking Thanksgiving with my mom. Wow. When I start thinking about collard greens, I think about my grandma. Nice. When I think about oxtails, I think about my dad always wanting to eat oxtails. So food is not just nutrients. Right. Food is our family, it's our traditions, it's our culture. Right. So that's why for me, it's always my last resort to take away our cultural foods because it means so much to us. Mm -hmm. And taking away those foods is taking away a piece of ourselves. 
Right. So I just want to encourage everyone to know that you can still eat foods that you like and foods you enjoy and be healthy. So when it comes to a diet, well, number one, I don't really like using the word diet just because a diet is usually connected to something short term and also very restrictive. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to like an overall like lifestyle change, the main thing I would say is eat your vegetables. I know I sound like your parents at the dinner table saying eat your veggies, mm -hmm. but seriously, that's the key. The main thing to do is make sure half of your plate is either fruits or vegetables. So for breakfast, if you're having oatmeal, you can have your oatmeal, which is a grain and also protein, but top it with fruits as well. Wow. And when you wanna have your dinner, you have your rice, you have your chicken, whatever you have, make the other half vegetables. So that would be the key because you wanna make sure you have balance in your diet where you're eating a good variety of foods. Right. And also, you know, moderation where you're not eating too much or too little of different foods as well. So that's the key. Stick to the foods you like, foods you enjoy, whether it's your collard greens, sweet potatoes, whatever it may be, but just try to balance it on your plate where half your plate is fruits or veggies. The other half is divided between grains and protein. And it's so enlightening to hear this because we oftentimes hear, uh, as we mentioned last week, a lot of folks who are marketing a lifestyle to us. It's like they're imposing. And you mentioned something about tradition and culture. It's yeah. an emotional thing to take that away from us because it's it's a deeply rooted ordeal to tell somebody out of nowhere, you can't eat this, just cold turkey. It's like saying you can't connect with your culture. Right. If you may. And that's 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 that is something that, you know, you can't really fathom or 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 easily adapt to, especially considering what you've been brought up doing. And I, I am really glad to hear that. And it's assuring because oftentimes I've heard for years because everybody has their system and everybody has a marketing scheme that they're utilizing to sell you a, a lifestyle because we won't use the word diet. And I, I appreciate <laughs> you for correcting me because we do know that a diet is temporary. Yeah. And, and I can attest to it. Anyone who knows anything about diets, you know that it's seasonal. You're on a diet in spring, by summer, you're doing whatever you want. And then by winter, you're like, oh, I got to get back together because spring is coming back around. We all know the ordeal and how that typically works. So now that we have a better idea of overall food balance, as you mentioned, you know, having the greens there, you know, just balancing how you, you know, your intake. And, and, and you know, I definitely feel that that is very important. What vitamins out there would you say you would recommend to our viewers? Like, uh, when it comes to daily um, doses that we should take or daily vitamins we should take, how and what should we do and what vitamins do you recommend? When it comes to vitamins, one thing I do have to put out there is that most vitamins are not regulated mm -hmm. by the FDA. Wow. So what that means is that anyone can create different vitamins and supplements, put them on the shelf, put them in major stores, like even you know the major chain stores as well. And these vitamins are not regulated. So that means they could have a lot of fillers. They could have a lot of other things in them that are not beneficial to us or that we don't even know about. Even a lot of the big companies, I won't call them out, but a lot of the bigger companies, they make these supplements and teas and juices and all kinds of things with marketing claims that may or may not be true. Wow. So never depend completely. I know it's scary, but yeah. never, com <laughs> never depend completely on a vitamin to get the nutrients you need. We should really try to get most of our nutrients from food. I do still recommend vitamins because it's really hard to get everything you need every single day. Right. And especially if you have young kids that may be pickier eaters, it's a great idea to get them on a vitamin as well. So the main vitamins I would recommend is a B vitamin. Mm -hmm. So there's a different B vitamins like B1, B2, B3, and you don't have to remember them all, but just know that B vitamins help with a lot of the metabolism that goes on in our body. So a lot of the major um, forces in our body, a lot of the mechanisms, are made with B vitamins. They're usually the cofactor, which means that they help get things moving. So I would recommend B vitamins, also iron, especially for women. We definitely should be on an iron supplement because we lose iron, we lose blood monthly and iron is found inside of our blood. Absolutely. Vitamin D is another good one because most people of, um, most people period are deficient in vitamin D. Mm -hmm. And especially most African-American people are deficient in vitamin D just because we have melanin, which stops our body from absorbing the vitamin D completely from the sun. Right. So yes, we can get vitamin D naturally, but we can also get it from food. It's fortified in a lot of foods, but like mushrooms are a good source and other foods like that. So that would be another supplement. And also a fun fact, there's a lot of research being done on vitamin D now. 
because there's studies showing that people that have higher vitamin D levels are less likely to test positive for COVID. Wow. I know. That is, that is, that is imperative. Yes. Wow. That is good so, to know. Yes. That is good to know, especially with, thank goodness the numbers are dropping. However, yes. we do anticipate, unfortunately, statistically, um, especially after speaking with a healthcare um, specialist, the numbers are supposed to spike up again because of the holidays. For some odd reason, it just has the proclivities to spike up. So it's good to hear that. So good folks, you all hear what could help prohibit or fight back the COVID virus. And that's very good to know. And um, I love mushrooms. So even though <laughs> mushrooms are considered by certain people to be processed and where are they from, this, that, and the third, but like broccoli. But right. these, these uh, uh, actual vegetables have have this thing where have have something in them that fills you up better than any other the, any other vegetable if you may you know right. and I'm sure you can add to that for sure um, especially thinking about mushrooms and and broccoli and so forth so I don't want to keep dwelling on that because we can go for days especially on the types of vegetables that we should or consider should consider and not consider but let me ask you this speaking on that because you mentioned earlier how we can balance our nutrition and our our, our our eating intake or what we consume. What foods would you say we should just stay away from with no questions, no ifs, ands, or buts? What should we ultimately, especially as a community, stay away from? Well, not to food shame because I know that pretty much you eat what you have access to. I grew up in Liberty City, so a lot of my diet growing up came from, you know, grabbing stuff from the corner store, meat market, right. things like that. So I'm not trying to food shame anyone, but just try to stick to as many natural foods as possible. Mm -hmm. So that's foods that your grandma would identify. Right. So that's foods that's growing in the ground. Those are the type of foods we want to stick to. We want to, as much as we can, avoid foods that have unnatural dyes, unnatural processing, unnatural flavoring, different things like that. Because we have to remember that with science, science is amazing, but it takes time. Absolutely. So by the time that we realize something's not good for us, we've probably been consuming it for a couple of years. So with that being said, let's stick to what's natural. Let's stick to the foods that are actually growing in the ground, foods that you can you know, identify as a, as a whole food compared to something that has been processed. Mm -hmm. Another tip that I would give you is to listen to your body and learn your body. Good. A lot of us just, we eat what we've been eating forever, right. but some of us go to bed every night and we have acid reflux. Mm -hmm. We have indigestion. We have, we just feel uncomfortable or bloated. Right. So it's important to learn your body. And what I would recommend for everyone to do is whenever you can change your diet up. That's good. Let's say start off with dairy. Stop drinking milk or eating a lot of cheese and yogurt, different things like that for a week and see how your body responds. Mm. If your body's the same, add dairy back. If you notice you feel better, maybe decrease dairy. Mm. Do the same for wheat. A lot of people are sensitive to wheat and gluten. And just as a quick disclaimer, gluten-free diets, it doesn't help you lose weight or anything like that. Absolutely not. <laughs> I, I, can you repeat that for those in the back? Because I have gluten free. <laughs> I have some colleagues, we, every time we go out, I just look at them like with the blank stare, like, you know, you, you, it, it's not helping your calorie intake whatsoever. Not you're not, it. you're not. And I need people to understand that, but go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I need people to understand that when something says gluten-free, it doesn't mean a thing. <laughs> right, all it means is that it doesn't have gluten, which is a part, which is a product of wheat. So it's one of the building blocks of wheat, to just put it simply. Right. So for some people that are sensitive to the gluten, then they cannot have gluten products like a lot of wheat and um, breads and different things like that. Right. But if you're not sensitive to it, eat it. It's not extra calories. It's not detrimental to your health at all. It's, it's just a part of wheat. And as we know, wheat is very high in fiber. So right. actually it's more beneficial than anything. Absolutely. So, you can try to remove, like I said, wheat from your diet for like a week just to see if you're sensitive to it because some people are, just like some people are sensitive to eggs and soy and the major allergens. And pretty much this is like doing a free allergy test if you wanna think about it like yeah. that way. Right. But it's just seeing how your body responds to food because you want to become more in tune with your body and realize, okay, when I eat certain foods, I feel this way. When I don't eat certain foods, like maybe in the morning you need something hot. If you notice that, okay, the days that I don't have my tea, I don't feel energized, maybe you need your tea. 
Right. But the main thing is to just kind of zone in and focus on yourself and focus on your body and find out what do I need? What do I not need? What makes me feel good and what makes me not feel so good? And I, I really appreciate you sharing that because one thing that is very, very intricate to this process is learning yourself, learning Definitely. what works for you. And, and most people won't tell you these truths. And you'll only find this on Qualified TV with, with someone who is certified and a, a, a registered dietitian like Miss Carter, okay? So I, I'm letting you all know this. We're not selling you any products. We're not telling you anything that, you know, to make any profits. Nobody's having, there There aren't any profits in this. We are looking out for your health and your, 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 your future. Because if you want to leave a legacy, you can't cut the present short. And Definitely. of course, we, we have to focus on that 80% and the efficacy of the 80%. I, I really appreciate this information because it's really profound. And as I mentioned earlier, this is something we got to get you back because we have, I, I would love for you to do a workshop um, essentially on this, especially for our community in a, a wider, you know, spectrum, a broader spectrum, spectrum team of people who needs to hear this because this is something I don't want it to be limited just to our channel, not saying our channel is limited because it's going to hit the highways and byways and that's our faith. But ultimately we want uh, where it's a face-to-face -face ordeal because people need to really hear from you and what it is that you have to to, to say and especially to impact um, in part and to help us change because we need the change. Yeah. Um, I know one thing for certain, you mentioned carbs and, and some people are <laughs> always afraid of carbs. And I know some people live by the 80-20. Now, this is a huge thing, especially for women uh, who are on, on, on the, the wheel train and they just want to lose weight, but they are immensely afraid because their trainer told them not to eat carbs. What would you recommend to somebody who's trying to lose weight? Uh, okay. As far as carb intake is concerned, you know, definitely please provide your insight. And what would you recommend to that individual? Okay. I will be honest. If you want to lose weight and you cut carbs, you will definitely lose weight. I agree. That's the truth. But what happens outside of that? Weight is great. We can drop 20 pounds. Awesome. I hear people tell me all the time, oh, I'm doing a new diet. I cut carbs out completely and I dropped 20 pounds. I look and I feel so good. Right. But we have to remember that carbs have a major role in our body. Just as a fun fact, our brain needs carbs to function. That is our brain's fuel. Our brain cannot use protein. It cannot use fat. Our brain uses carbohydrates. Wow. So think about it like this. If I'm not eating carbs, how am I fueling my brain? Wow. What do I need my brain for every day? <laughs> a lot, everything. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's how I try to tell people like, yes, you'll lose weight. I would never say that you won't lose weight from cutting carbs. You definitely will. But your brain needs carbs to function. Also your nervous system, your muscles, your kidneys, everything needs carbs. It's the basic form of fuel for our body. So I would not recommend to cut carbs, so to speak. But the recommendations from the Dietary Guidelines of America is 45 to 65% of our daily intake should be carbs. Wow. So that's like about 220, 300 grams. And to put that in perspective, two slices of bread is like 44 grams. Mm -hmm. A potato is like 55 grams. Wow. So there's also vegetables, which is a lot lower in carbohydrates too. Because the so vegetables would... has water. Yes. So when it comes to carbs, another thing they provide is fiber. And I know I talked about fiber a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. but what fiber does, it helps you with satiety. So that means eating foods that have fiber, like whole grains, usually help you feel full longer, which mm -hmm. is important. And just think about if you eat like a sandwich compared to eating um, cookies or something. When you eat cookies, they don't really have fiber. So you can eat a whole container and not really full, feel satisfied. Right. But when you eat something like a whole grain, you know, sandwich that has, you know, like the bread, the lettuce, tomatoes, onions, everything like that, you feel satisfied because it has the fiber. So I say that to let you know that you do need carbs because carbs usually have fiber as well. Mm -hmm. But what we need to do is focus on the types of carbs. So when we're eating vegetables, they contain carbohydrates, which are great for us because they have fiber. If you're eating candy, drinking juices, different things like that, it contains sugar, which is the smallest compound of carbohydrates, but it's right. not going to give you that same fullness. Right. So I wouldn't really focus on cutting carbs. I would focus on changing the type of carbs that I have mm -hmm. to be more of like the whole foods, not the, not the grocery store, but like the entire food compared to just like the processed or broken down byproducts of food. Awesome. And I'm glad you said that because 
from I remember during my binge eating periods, I'd have moments where I'd eat my Oreo cookies like a whole <laughs> pack. And I wouldn't feel, you yeah. know, fully thoroughly satisfied. And here's another thing um, you mentioned that brought that 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 made me um gain reflection of the past. When I used to drink juice a lot, I would yeah. keep on drinking juice and I would never quench that thirst until I finally drink water. And and it's not even that much water, the thirst would quench. So it's really a mind thing as you mentioned um and it's very imperative that we all understand this and miss carter i can't stress enough how elated we were to have you here today and we definitely are going to get you back as we mentioned as promised because our viewers need to hear more from you especially in our community knowing that um we are dying daily as a result of heart attack heart attacks and not taking care of ourselves and our health and doing whatever we want without being well balanced. Can you please provide some final thoughts to our viewers and any recommendations and where they can get in touch with you? Okay, uh, well, one of the final thoughts I'll leave you with is that negative health issues like cardiovascular disease, you know, diabetes, cancer, they don't run in your family. And what I mean by that is it's not genetic, you don't have to get it, we have control. That's so good. that's the main thought I want you to leave with today. Know that I have control of my health. I have control of my life when it comes to medical conditions. The foods you're eating, exercise, a lot of factors can help combat that. So I never want you to feel like, okay, because my parents had diabetes, I'm going to get it. No, you don't have to. We can make those changes today. But another thing I will tell you is making changes are hard. It is. <laughs> it's very hard to change our diet because it's intertwined into so many factors of our life. The holidays are coming up. When we are stressed, we yeah. kind of eat more or less. When we have, you know, um, life events happen, we also eat more, eat less. So it really fluctuates. So I would just want you to know that it's not that you're not doing a good job. It's just not easy for all of us. Even myself as a dietitian, yeah. it's not easy. So just kind of give yourself grace and just continue to get back up. Whenever you have a bad day, just make sure the next day is better. And you said how to get in contact with me. So you can follow my nonprofits page. It's Eat Well Exchange, all together one word, or also my personal um, consulting page, Ashley V Nutrition. Awesome. There you have it, good people. You heard it from the best. It's not how you began. It's not even the, the, the background you're from. It's not even what your parents did, your grandparents did. You have the option to change. You have the opportunity to make a difference and don't get caught up on this generational ordeal because you have an opportunity to break the change and start over. Why not start over today? So we yeah. appreciate again, Ashley, thank you so much for coming. And we thank every one of you who, who, who took time to watch us and please stay tuned. We have more for you. Just remember above all things, it's not what occurred. It's not what occurred in the previous generations because you have an opportunity to start anew and make a difference because you're still qualified to win. Thank you all. See you soon. Don't touch that doubt. We're still here. What's good, family? I hope you enjoyed the first segment of our podcast as we discuss the importance of nutrition. Listen, I'm going to share with you a few meals that I've eaten to help me lose 25 pounds in my weight loss journey. Come on, let's go. After an intense cardio session on an empty stomach, it is important that you remember to eat your breakfast. I usually start my breakfast off with a smoothie, which consists of half a banana. I add some pineapples in there. You gotta get your antioxidants in there. I also add some cucumbers, which is good for the skin. I add some strawberries in there. And then I also put some raspberries. Raspberries are a good substitution for high level sugar. Most of the times we get that sugar urge. It's good to add the raspberries and blueberries. I also put the beets in there and a little bit of water. Why do you add the beets, G? Good question. It helps those with low iron. It helps those of us who suffer with high blood pressure. And it's also good for men with hormones. Right after my workout, I just made my shake. You know, of course you have to veer that appetite because that's the biggest part of this lifestyle. So what I usually do, secret of it, of it all, drink green tea. So I get a lemon, cut the lemon in half. I boiled my green tea here. What I do is I add some green, add some lemon into my green tea. Once I squeeze the lemon in there, I drop it in there. 
and I drink the green tea. Now, the, the secret with the green tea, um, the lemon with the green tea, it veers your appetite. It takes away the desire to eat anything that you would typically eat. All right, so definitely a good idea, a good supplement or good substitution for any other meal, green tea, right after you have your shake, maybe like 20, 30 minutes after and throughout the day, I would say drink green tea uh, with lemon at least three to five times a day. And it's also better to drink green tea uh, with lemon instead of coffee. I know it's very difficult, especially if anybody's like me, you love coffee for all of my coffee drinkers, it's actually better to drink green tea over coffee, unless you're doing black coffee early in the morning after your fasted cardio to help you get the caffeine that you need to lift weights. Our first meal is a cup of brown shrimp fried rice, half a cup of broccoli, two wings. We estimate that this meal is below 500 calories, about 480 calories at most. We all know what time it is. It's lunchtime. I always urge people during lunchtime to use that opportunity to eat the rice that you love because some, some of us really can't stay away from rice. So I urge you to use brown rice. And you all know with brown rice, it's part to boil, so you have to use double the water. Get your measuring cup, measure in accordance to how you're going to serve uh, your portions during the week. So with me, I usually add onions in my rice uh, to give it more flavor, especially because we're adding double the water to boil it so it doesn't have a crunchy taste after, and we know it's difficult to boil brown rice. And I'm also adding red pepper. With that red pepper, trust and believe when I say this, it gives it a better flavor, a better taste. So now we're gonna bake broccoli. I prefer to bake my broccoli. Some folks like to steam their broccoli. It's really up to you. I'm going to use one bag, which is really one um, meal's worth of broccoli. I'm going to put it on my tray, add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, some garlic salt. I'm going to add some black pepper. And of course, you got to get the cayenne pepper in there to give it a nice flavor. Put it on the oven for about 10 minutes, 375, and enjoy. All right, so good people. Now we're going to focus on the chicken. Now, everybody has their way or method of how they make chicken. Me personally, I have to thump it. In my language, we call it thump it. You know, my island background, I put some vinegar in here. Um, I put some lime, let it rest for a while, at least 30 to an hour. Make sure that you clean out your chicken. Very important. The reason why I personally recommend meal prepping on your own because we don't know what it is that they're putting in our food. We don't know the amount of seasons that they're putting in. We don't know the, the actual count. So the measurement, so it's very paramount that you meal prep and that you know what it is that is mandatory and necessary for your dietary needs because this is a lifestyle. So we definitely are going to move forward now that we know that we clean out the chicken. We're gonna now cut the chicken wings. So let's get going. We're taking them out. All right, so I prefer to cut it in half. Cut the chicken. Some people prefer to cut this piece off. It makes no difference to me because the method we're going to use, you won't even, even have to worry about that part of the chicken. Cut it in half. A little piece of fat hanging there. We're gonna cut that fat out. Now the seasons that I like to use in all honesty, are well-known seasons, but you don't want to overdo it because you don't want to defeat the purpose. So we want to make sure that we keep things at a minimal. So the first thing that I like to personally use, black pepper. Sprinkle a little bit around the chicken. Mind you, because I cut it in half, we now have six pieces in here. I then put, add some garlic powder. Now with the garlic powder, we don't want to add, overdo it. We just sprinkle a little bit. And that's it. Me, I'm a person who likes spicy foods, so we'll put a little bit of cayenne pepper, cayenne pepper, however way you like to say it. We'll add a little bit of onion pepper. If you didn't overdo it, you could put a little bit of Creole seasonings. Creole seasonings usually gives the food a little kick. We could add a little bit of Creole seasonings, and that's about it. Now we're gonna mix it all together and make sure that each part of the chicken gets the seasoning. All right, so mix it all together. Some of you, if you're like me, you'll use your hands, whatever. Just make sure you use gloves because you have to consider everybody else. 
who's eating your food. All right, so we'll put this in the refrigerator. We'll add some aluminum foil, put it in the refrigerator for at least two hours. Okay, so we'll place it in some aluminum foil and we'll let the season marinate for at least two hours. In some cases, what you can do, you can actually do the seasoning uh, the night before. Let it dwell in there, let it marinate, and let it soak in so that way you get the best of your meal. All right, so we're gonna put it in the refrigerator for two hours. In the midst of doing all of this cooking, don't forget, constantly clean after yourself. You'll actually make the job easier. Two hours later. All right, it's been two hours. The chicken has marinated. So now we're gonna put the chicken in one of my best investments, be an air fryer. The reason why the air fryer gets rid of all the excessive fat, and that's the reason why I feel like it's still okay for you actually use wings. So here's the reason why we're gonna use the air fryer so we can get some of the fat out of the chicken. All right, we're going to add the chicken here to the air fryer. Putting each piece, woo, smells real delicious. Adding it to the air fryer. Anybody who knows me personally knows I'm a flats man, but you know what? When it's my chicken, it doesn't even matter because we anticipate that it's going to give us the results. We put it on chicken mode, all right? 25 minutes. With the air fryer, your first 15 minutes or first, I would say 15 minutes, check on it and turn them over. While the chicken's cooking in the air fryer, in the meantime, we're gonna check on the rice. All right, good family. It shows that the rice is actually done. Woo! It looks real delicious. And it smells really good. And it's brown rice, so you, it's really good to add these peppers, add the onions. It gives the rice, despite the fact that it's brown rice, it doesn't have to be boring it gives it a better flavor. Meal prepping doesn't have to be boring. Eating clean, a good diet doesn't have to be boring. We have the brown rice and we have the chicken in the air fryer. What are we going to do with the brown rice? We're gonna make brown shrimp fried rice. Let's do it. All right, so now we're going to season our shrimp. See, we had our shrimp actually get clean. We took all of the extra stuff out of the shrimp. The shell is out, so we're gonna cut our shrimp and we're going to season our shrimp. All right, so we're gonna start with the badia, complete seasoning. Not too much, a little cayenne pepper. I like my food a little bit spicy, so we don't want to put too much, of course, because we know that seafood always consumes more seasoning or absorbs it better. And here's some black pepper. Woo, it smells good in this kitchen, baby. It smells real good in the kitchen. And haters are gonna say it's Photoshop, but it's G-Fab, baby. All right, here's some garlic powder. And if you guys didn't know, I'm the best cook in my house. I just wanted to make a public announcement. Just kidding. But here we go, Creole seasoning. You all know what it is. It's back, we're gonna add a little bit, not too much. All right, just a little bit. Camera lady said, why not? So we're gonna add a little bit of mustard. All right. Now we're gonna mix it all in there. Woo! Make sure it gets all in the shrimp. We're gonna let it marinate for about two hours. It should look like this. If your shrimp doesn't look like this, I want you to give, you know what? Put the camera on me. If your shrimp doesn't look like this, I need you to call me. You're gonna need to call me. If your shrimp doesn't look like this, I'm going to need you to call me. Now we have our skillet ready. We're gonna start preparing for our brown rice. I add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. I'm also adding a little bit of water to dilute it a little bit. All right, baby. And here comes the shrimp. Mmm. It smells good in the kitchen, baby. Smells real good. And we're still healthy. We're still remaining within calories because we want to always make sure that no matter what we do, our caloric intake daily is low. That's the only way you get to actually see the results 
of your actual workouts and what it is you want to accomplish. So we'll let the shrimp sit here for just a few moments as we get ready to add the brown rice once the shrimp starts to brown up. We're going to add the brown rice. Listen to all of my viewers out there, if you'd like to add eggs, like if you're on a super high protein diet, please feel free to add the egg in there. You can definitely do that. If you're on a real high protein diet, I personally didn't add the egg, but you can definitely add the egg in there for your shrimp fried rice. We don't want to get rid of the identity of shrimp fried rice. I didn't add much vegetables in this rice because the vegetables were already in the rice prior to. I'm going to add a low sodium soy sauce to this mix, all right? We're not gonna put too much. We don't want to overdo it. That's it. Just to give it that nice flavor. Woo! Smells good in this kitchen, people. Eating healthy doesn't have to be a bore. Eating healthy doesn't have to be miserable. It doesn't have to be a misery. You can enjoy yourself eating healthy and still lose the weight. So now we're flipping the chicken because I like my chicken to be well done. So we're flipping our chicken. Make sure that we have it. Make sure our chicken is actually brown. All right, we'll put it back in. Let's say another, let's do 12 minutes. Another 12 minutes, let's go. Oh, the chicken's ready. Woo! Now let's make our chicken buffalo wings. Let's get to it. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little bit of buffalo sauce. Just a little bit. I put hot sauce on everything. All right, here we go. And now we're gonna go ahead and add that to meal number one. We're gonna prepare our second meal. Now our second meal is salmon and a cup of broccoli. This meal is about 460 calories. So you're still staying under the 1200, 1500 mark because you wanna make sure that you remain on a daily caloric deficit. That's the way you're gonna lose this weight. So our second meal, we want our second meal to be our last meal for the day. So it's always good to eat the most lean meal at the end of the day. Got some salmon here. We actually cleaned out the salmon as well. Got some lemon. You don't wanna put vinegar and salmon all like that, you know, but you do want to make sure that your salmon is clean. You know that with fish, season sticks to fish really hard. So you gotta be real gentle with how you season your meat when it comes to fish. We're gonna use some garlic powder. We're gonna add a little bit of garlic powder. Remember, we don't want to go overboard because fish absorbs seasoning much more better than chicken. And as I mentioned earlier, I like my spices, so we're gonna use some black pepper, okay? Put a little black pepper in here. We're also gonna put some cayenne pepper. Add a little bit of that Creole seasoning, all right? Let's marinate it around the fish. Turn it over, let it dwell in that, that season and let it come back. And what we're gonna do now, we're gonna take this fish and we're gonna put it under the oven. We're gonna add a little bit of mustard to the bacon tray. Not too much, just a little bit. Just to give it a little bit more season and we also, it also helps with not letting it stick on the tray. So we're gonna add the Salmon here, and we'll put a little lemon on the side. Got to put the lemon on the side, and we'll add that under the oven. At about 375. So we'll leave the salmon until it gets brown. We don't want any pink, um, anything pinkish. It's my preference, but we'll leave it till it's brown. Usually 30 to 45 minutes um, to get it where we need to be. All right, let's move. A few moments later. Ooh, look how it's sizzling. Look how delicious this looks. And it's really brown. It's good and ready to go. So we're gonna add that to our plate. And this is meal number two for the day and we'll get to that momentarily. You 
want to make sure that you stay within 1200 to 1500 calories daily. I don't care what anyone tells you. The most you want to go to is maybe 1900. It could be pushing, but it's contingent on your workout, when you eat, how you, the time frame you digest these meals. But this is what worked for me. And I'm somebody who has the propensity to gain weight really fast. So these two meals keep you under 1200 calories. As we all know, another thing that you want to do daily, drink a gallon of water a day. For some of you, it's difficult to jug, you know, down water from an actual gallon. Maybe invest in a pitcher, add some ice in the pitcher, cut half of a lemon in there, put some water in here, at least about two pitchers will equate a gallon of water. Do that daily. This is very good, um, not only for your body, but more importantly, the lemon in here veers your appetite as well. So the green tea is definitely an, a, a major assistance to this process, major help. Water with lemon is also resourceful with this process. So viewers, something that you wanna take away, keep this as a lifestyle and I promise you, you keep this as a lifestyle, your body will thank you. All right, good folks, we're gonna have our actual videographer, she doesn't wanna show her face, but we're gonna have her taste the wings and she's going to actually, and I want you to tell the truth, you pick which one you want and you let the viewers know if it's good or if it's not good, yay or nay, let's do it. Let's see. God is good, God is good. Yeah, say your prayers. It's good. Uh huh, yeah. I'm don't be so don't disrespect. <laughs> Viewers, family, <laughs> qualified. No matter where you are, no matter where you've been, don't let anybody limit you. Not even the haters who can't believe you can't cook. But at the end of the day, just know you're still qualified to win no matter where you are in life. Peace. Good day to all my family and friends, Dr. G here. Listen, I can't thank you enough for all of the support, all of the kind words, all of the encouragement you've given us. You all keep me motivated, you all keep us going. Don't forget to visit drgeorgefabray.com. Again, drgeorgefabray.com. You can purchase our merchandise, you can purchase our books, you can even book me for any of your, your, your upcoming events. If you want a, a speaker for any speaking engagement, if you need a host for any of your bar mitzvahs, weddings, any gala, I'm there at your disposal for all of your needs. More importantly, we thank you. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, share our YouTube channel, Qualify Podcast. We thank you and we appreciate you for all that you've done and we can't say it enough. No matter where you are, no matter what you've been through, this is not a cliche, but we're just reminding you that you are still qualified to win.